Okay, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at three short examples of building chains of reasoning to explain how a given factor might cause a shift in aggregate demand. Here's the first one. Explain how lower interest rates can increase aggregate demand. Let's take the example here of a fall in the interest rate on a mortgage. That means that home buyers have less to pay when they're servicing their loans. And if the mortgage payments go down, this means they have a higher effective disposable income, which can then be spent on goods and services. Effective disposable income is the income after tax and welfare and essential payments, such as utilities and mortgages. So mortgage rates going down means people can have more, more income to spend. And another effect is also to bring down the cost of servicing the interest payments on a credit card or perhaps taking out a, some other form of loans. And if interest rates go down, this also reduces the incentive to save, especially, here's a key point, especially if the nominal or the money rate of interest on savings is below the rate of inflation, which means the real interest rate would be negative. Now, through these channels, uh, cheaper mortgages, cheaper credits, uh, less incentive to save. A fall in interest rates can be expected to lift consumer demand, which is the biggest single component of, of AD. Cheaper loans might also lead to a rise in investment spending by firms. <clears throat> Some firms may decide they can now afford that loan to, uh, to bring forward an investment project. So potentially as well, interest rates could stimulate investment, which is also a component of demand. Here's a second question. Explain how a fall in state welfare spending reduces aggregate demand. In the UK, they've introduced the government's brought in what's called the benefit cap. Originally brought in in 2013, essentially caps the amount that a household can receive each year in welfare benefits. And uh, my latest data suggests it's £23,000 in London and £20,000 in the UK. One of the aims is to reduce spending on welfare and also to try and encourage people back into work. Well, what's the effect on aggregate demand? Well, first of all, uh, two examples of welfare would be universal credits paid to families on below average incomes and the state pension, of course, to those who claim the state pension, those people who have retired. So if the government cuts entitlement to welfare, this will have a direct impact on the disposable income of millions of households. Disposable income is income after tax and welfare. As a result, if disposable income drops, then people will have less discretionary income to spend after they've paid their, their bills. And this will lead to a fall in consumer spending, which is the biggest single component of aggregate demand. And you could develop the analysis by thinking about the circumstances, the financial fragility of many families on low incomes. They have often very limited savings, very, very small pots of savings and bank accounts, bank accounts and things to draw on if their welfare payments are cut. And they might try to maintain their spending by taking out credit. But if they choose to do that, they risk paying very high interest rates on unsecured loans. Uh, typically, by the way, with welfare, uh, the families in receipt of welfare, they tend to have a high propensity to consume. Therefore, if you cut welfare, that has quite a significant effect on demand. And here's my third example of a chain of reasoning. Explain how a drop in business confidence can affect aggregate demand. Business confidence is often uh, using surveys. We're trying to capture the expectations, the sentiment, what Keynes called the animal spirits of entrepreneurs, of businesses. And of course, that confidence ebbs and flows. That we, we have periods of confidence. Uh, we have periods of pessimism. Typically, firms are asked about the next six, 12 months. What's going to happen to your orders, to your exports, to your jobs, to your profits? So business confidence essentially reflects expectations about the future. Keynes labelled these animal spirits, great phrase to use. A drop in business confidence might be caused by perhaps the start of a recession or an industrial recession. And if business sentiment goes down, many firms may choose to postpone or perhaps even cancel 
some planned investment projects. And a fall in investment, fall in I in the formula, C plus I plus G plus X minus M, well, that will reduce injections into the circular flow of income. Uh, investment is a key part of the circular flow. And it's also going to lead to a fall in demand for capital goods. Businesses manufacturing, making the new machinery, making the new hardware. Businesses building new factories and things. They will see demand for their own products going down. And as a result, aggregate demand will fall. Uh, and this might also lead to low confidence firms to make some of their labour force redundant. So if business confidence goes down, some firms may may opt to uh, to cut the size of their labour force. And that fall in jobs and incomes, again, will have second, third round effects through what's called the negative multiplier. So hopefully you can see here how a fall in business confidence can often have quite a powerful, often immediate effect on one or more components of aggregate demand. In the next video, in this series on AD, we'll turn our attention to consumer spending.